going to talk about the economics of virtual reality arcades. Normally we do talk about the creativity aspects of what we do, not the money. But as this is an investment forum and there is a big money focus, I will share my experiences I gained during the last year in designing virtual reality arcades. Um, about three weeks ago, you probably never heard of us, we announced this, Kenzan Arena. Kenzan Arena is our franchise brand for virtual reality arcades. Basically, as a next generation storyteller, there is no facility currently to really tell the stories how we want to tell them. You have HTC Vive or high quality HMDs at home, um, not in a big number, which are confined single player experiences. It's not a social uh, thing. And you have uh, across the world, you have different virtual reality arcades. But um, we were lacking the multiplayer, the social aspect of it. That's why we started a few years ago to build the system ourselves, partnered up with a Chinese company that is uh, fabulous in motion tracking and added all the other things on top that we needed to complete um, the system. So we are talking over 200 square meters of free roaming space. We of course have wind, we of course have scent, and we have motion platforms that can basically emulate anything you want to create uh, in the games. And the first location we will actually open here in Zurich in uh, August. We probably announce in about two weeks where that will be. We haven't announced that uh, yet. What is special about um, this system is it should be a standard for content creation studios worldwide that they can develop content for, not only us developing content, and they know that it will run in a few hundred facilities worldwide without adapting it, because that's the challenge we have currently. A lot of people are interested in our content, but they have to adapt it to every location, because every location at the moment is different. Also special, we are not just about gaming. So the facilities we have are gaming facilities, mainly in the evening, are educational facilities. So we want to have schools coming in, just talked in the other break to uh, Stadt Zurich back there about uh, things they are developing, ideal scenarios, schools taking a time trip into the past together, things you can't do in real life. And also businesses, so be it um, architecture, be it that you want to show a boat, that you want to sell to a high net worth individual, um, or, or you want to train people, um, we will open up our facility for rent for businesses also. If you visited a, an arcade that is already existing worldwide, um, they look like this. This was one of the first ones in the US. Or oh, they look a little bit fancier. This is IMAX. You see a lot of space. So this is one player playing here. You see the corridors. It's an experience area. IMAX also says, says it that way. But from a financial perspective, something like that in Switzerland will never work. And we know that IMAX is also at the moment paying on top based on the location um, that they are. If you are talking single player and uh, you have three people there for, I think they have 12 pots, your employees will look like this. <laughs> because everyone that operates at the moment these, these uh, system knows um, they have difficulties. And the, the player needs introduction, they need to know it doesn't work at the push of the button. I don't want to generalize this. If you are born in China, and if you know the Chinese market a little bit, they are well ahead of us. Um, of course, you can operate the system very um, easily. So you need to think in game design and also in movement of the people. If you have a game where people make fast reactions, turn around fast, um, maybe even run um, to dodge a bullet, you need to confine the space of the player to be safe. And when we launch, we will have around five scenarios where you, where you have to solve riddles in virtual reality. We focus on things you can't do in real life. That's actually how it looked like in San Jose. Two IKEA tables that you can bump into each other, have the right measurements and the scepters uh, in hand. We made the decision to buy versus build. Um, 
this year, backpack PCs that are on the market at a good price are actually working. And they're working very well. We don't have problems with backpack PCs at the moment. We have more problems with, uh, with the displays, the full rate of the displays. Um, and these are developing really, really fast. So for August, we are ready with the current set. But already next year, we are expecting large improvements um, in these devices. Standardize. <clears throat> mentioned that in the beginning. Standardize the facility, standardize the split to play, standardize the APIs for third party developers because we don't want to stay on the four games that we launch in, uh, in August. We want to have third party developers coming in and also have their content uh, ready.